thing. You can see. Whoa! You're the worst! Oh, oh no! <laughs> okay, whoa, oh, okay, I'll take Diddy, I'll take Diddy, I'll take Diddy. I'd have to say that I get excited about each and every clutch of snake, lizard, whatever the case may be we produce, but I figured today I would spend some time kind of trying to narrow down the five projects that I'm probably the most excited about this year, and I want to preface by saying that none of these projects have anything to do with financial gain. It's all right. It's things that I'm excited about to produce myself. This happens to be a hypomelanistic 100 flower rat snake or Molendorfi. I got this girl as a baby about five years ago, and typically these guys take about five years to mature. She did lay a clutch of eggs, but unfortunately they were infertile. Now this year, I think that she's finally up to size and could potentially produce. I have a normal male, so really I'll be producing heterozygous for hypomelanistic. I have to raise those guys up for five more years and potentially produce hypomelanistic 100 flowers or molendorfites another five or six years from now. It is definitely a labor of love, but I think that's the thing, to be totally honest with you. A lot of times the projects I'm the most excited about aren't necessarily like the coolest, the newest, the cut edge. Again, not the most expensive animals. It's just projects that I have a lot of emotional attachment to. Again, when I bought this animal five years ago, I was over the top. I was so excited about it. It was a species of snake I always wanted to work with. And to get my very first 100 flower rat snake as a mutation, the only really mutation that's ever been produced, and I think there's only like two or three of these in existence that I know of, I was pretty darn excited. So this is a clubert is certainly right up there at the top of the list. And I showed you guys my female black tail Kribo the other day that had just ovulated. Well, of course, this is Rico. Rico has been one of my favorite snakes for many years now. I mean, just look at this animal. This is a colubrid. Absolutely enormous. I mean, that is an incredibly impressive animal. And the truth is, is that I've actually bred these guys in the past and produced a few clutches of eggs, but I've never actually hatched one because they were always infertile. Whether it was Rico's problem, whether it was the female's problem, I have no idea. This looks like the first clutch of eggs that actually looks good. And you might ask, well, how do you know that, Brian? The truth is, is after breeding snakes for as long as I am, you can really feel if a snake has fertile eggs or infertile eggs in it. And the females will typically look pretty swollen up, but when you actually palp them, let them run through your hand, they'll almost feel like hard, like little marbles or ping pong balls. This girl feels real soft and really full. That's usually a sign of fertile eggs. So there is no doubt that I am over the moon excited to finally, for the very first time, produce black tail Kribos because the dry mark on her, all the family that the Kribos and indigos in have always been one of my favorite snake and a lot of people talk about them being some of the most intelligent snakes out there certainly rico is amazing and he's about to be a daddy so i definitely know that this one is one of my top five most exciting clutches of the year another project that is definitely a labor of love is this girl right here this is actually a super lori ball python and i've told the story before the lori ball pythons actually came from we used to import baby ball pythons and we would pick through sometimes thousands of babies and pull out just little anomalies. This is way back in the day when little tiny mutations really weren't that interesting. Even stuff like sinnies really weren't that big of a deal back then before the ball python whole thing popped and became super, super popular. So Lori picked out a couple ball pythons from one bag that came directly from West Africa that was hatched in West Africa and she marked them Keep Lori. And over the next year or two, we always just kept them as Lori balls just to identify them as those were the two ball pythons that Lori picked. Well, people were coming to visit and they're saying like, what's these lorry balls. What's these lorry balls? I always had the intention to change the name at some point. Nevertheless, as the ball python hobby started to explode, we ended up proving out that the lorry ball python was co-dominant when we bred it to a normal. Now, the female wasn't ready till the next year, and then all of a sudden, everyone already knew them as lorry balls because everyone had been talking about them. And the following year, we produced the first super lorry balls, which is just like this. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't done nearly as much with this project as I should. So it's near and dear to my heart. So this year, we're taking this super lorry female which means all the babies will be lorry. We're taking it to a banana enchi yellow belly because the enchi lorries look really cool. We've never seen what a banana lorry looks like and we've never done a yellow belly lorry yet. So maybe that combination could be really, really cool. All right, I'm gonna throw in a bonus because we were talking about lorries and as I was looking around, like I've gotta include this one. So theoretically, this will be another one of the top five just because again, I love the lorry project and this is a leopard lorry ball python, super cool. Now this is actually being bred to a super lorry and a lorry just as a backup. So 
hopefully we can produce a Super Lori Leopard because already the Super Lori, as you saw with the Super Lori I showed you, the pattern is crazy. What is the leopard gene gonna do to it? Oh my gosh, it could be really cool. So again, I wanted to just keep it to one ball python clutch, but I saw this one and I was like, I gotta include this one too. And like I said, this isn't the most exotic animal that I'm gonna produce this year in ball pythons. It certainly isn't the most expensive ball python I'm gonna produce because the truth is, is that I don't really even look at clutches like that anymore. I look at clutches that just get me excited. And sometimes we're actually even breeding animals that we could breed to something else to produce a much rarer animal. But we just decide, hey, we really like to produce. I think this will be a really cool combo. So it's kind of nice to be in that position now where the animals are more about having fun producing awesome stuff and not really worrying about the financial side like I used to have to with BHB. Like I've mentioned over and over again, we love BHB and BHB is such a big part of what I do. But the fact is, is that I don't look at it as a financial thing anymore. I look at it really as like a glorified hobby in a weird way. Regardless, a super leopard lorry is going to be incredible. I've had a bunch of people asking about the baby rhino iguanas that we got a while ago. The male is getting absolutely huge. Let's go find Lori and I'll show you both of them. Uh, they are awesome, but they're still a little bit crazy. So we got Bella when she was like six, seven months old. So she, I think she was past the like crazy stage, but these guys are crazy. So uh, what do you say we try to get them out and show them? You'll be blown away how big Diddy did. I mean, Diddy's like twice the yeah, size of the Diddy female. So let's give it a shot. Whoa, 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 whoa,
it down to five, well, in this case, six clutches or litters that I'm super excited about. I bought my first Hypo Brazilian Rainbow Boas about five years ago, and it just takes a while with this particular mutation. It's a recessive mutation, and they don't grow quite as fast as a normal Brazilian Rainbow. If you feed them too much, they seem to have some digestive issues. So we took our time, we raised these guys up, and last year I put this male Hypo Brazilian Rainbow with a couple females, including a head female, and he just wasn't ready to breed. He showed no signs of breeding whatsoever, so we tried, we tried, and we finally just gave up and said, I guess we're not going to get any hypos or het hypo Brazilian rainbows. Well, thankfully, this year, he's much bigger. You can see he's got a meal in him right now, and he has been breeding this year, so that is really great news. So, with any luck, we will not only produce some het hypos, which are going to be outbred new gene pool, which will hopefully make the bloodline even that much more stronger, and hopefully we'll produce some hypo Brazilians, too. Again, I think that the projects that you work for really hard, you know, four, five, six, sometimes eight or ten years you work for, those are the ones that are kind of the most exciting to me anyways. So even though there is a million other animals that I'm super excited about producing this year, I tried to narrow it down for you guys. Let me know in the comments. If you're breeding snakes, what is your most anticipated litters or clutches of the year? And if you're not, what would you like to breed? I'd like to know from you guys. Or, and hey, while you're down there, hit that like button and tell me what you're the most excited about here at BHB. So uh, that wraps up that part of the vlog. Just wrapping up here at the Reptarium. We're actually open tonight, so I'm going to be here for a very short period of time because I am traveling out to the East Coast to go do a collab with a couple cool YouTubers. I'm also going to Steve at Leaping Leeches. I am so excited. This guy has not only the best leechy collection, of course the giant geckos, and a bunch of other really cool animals. So it's going to be absolutely bonkers. So I've got to get things wrapped up here. We'll open up. I'll stay for maybe a half hour or so and then hit the road for about a nine to ten hour drive. <laughs> you ready? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> How are you? Hi, come on in guys. Hi, welcome, welcome guys. Welcome, how are you? Hi, how are you? Welcome guys. How's it going? Hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hi, welcome. Hey, what's going on man? How are you? Welcome. How Thank are you. you? Good. Good. Awesome. Well, come on in, man. <laughs> all right, so things are definitely popping off. We got all kinds of stuff out. We got potato out over here. We got the children's python over here. What is going on over here? Anita, of course. Why is there no monkeys? We got bearded out over here. Beautiful. All right. All right. So as much as I hate to do it, because I hate leaving when it's really busy and we're having a lot of fun, but I do have to get on the road because again, I've got like a nine and a half, almost 10 hour drive ahead of me. So what do you say we get out of the reptarium? Get on the road. About an hour into this long drive. I mean, who doesn't take a drive at five o'clock, uh, nine and a half or 10 hours to the other coast, if you know what I mean. So Noah's in the back there. Are you sleeping yet, Noah? No, you keep waking me up. Okay, you excited? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, cool. My buddy Corey is with me, so uh, it is definitely going to be a long drive, but it's going to be a good one. And with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and end the vlog. Wish you guys an absolutely amazing day. Tell you that I love you. Be kind to of someone, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.